Good morning, friends. Today uh, we will be dealing with abstraction losses again in this watershed hydrology course. In the last class, we have in abstraction losses we have dealt with interception, depression, storage, and infiltration. As we let let's have a quick recap of what we have learned last time. We have learned that. Uh, the toe, all the all water which falls on the earth's surface is not used by the plants. Some portion of it flows as runoff. Some portion of it uh, seeps into the soil, and some por portion of it is obstructed as interception or depression losses. And these uh, losses, like infiltration, evaporation, transpiration interception and depression stories constitute the abstraction losses. Last time we also learned uh, about the interception, how uh, the rainfall when it falls is initially intercepted by the vegetation or the plant canopy or the habitation buildings. Uh, then again we have also learned uh, about the depression storage then it will meet the wherever depression is there on the or land land surface it will fill that with depressions once this this depression is filled and uh, at the same time evaporation as well as transpiration simultaneously occurs and also occurs is your infiltration then again uh, after uh, depression storage the ray uh, uh, this uh, Infiltrations uh, in the depressed areas, the, uh, the rainfall will start infiltrating into the soil. The unsaturated condition initially, after that, in the saturated condition. These all are the things, and we have also studied about the infiltration. We also studied how do we measure these different types of these components. First, how do we measure? the interception for in, uh, measuring the or determining the interception there is a instrument called in, interceptometer which is installed uh, beneath the canopy uh, and whatever rain is collected beneath the canopy when rain falls is compared with the rainfall collected in a rain gauge nearby and both are compared and the difference between the uh, rainfall collected in the, uh, beneath the canopy and the one in the open field through rain gauges, that difference is your interception losses. Again, we have uh, studied how do we uh, uh, measure the infiltration. For infil measuring the or determining the infiltration, there are two indices. One was fine dice, which is based on, on the assumption that the entire uh, during the entire uh, duration the rain falls at a same uh, intensity the second was w index which is not very popular however it 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 uh, considers the initial abstraction losses which is not considered in case of phi index but this uh, because of the difficulty in determining the uh, in, uh, abstraction losses uh, the phi index is not very much popular as uh, uh, phi index is more popular because it does not consider uh, it, uh, you know uh, take into account the abstraction losses which is very difficult to measure uh, 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 through w index we may, uh, we have to measure the, this abstraction losses as well so today we will be dealing uh, with the other abstraction losses, especially uh, evaporation, evapotranspiration and evapotranspiration and how do we measure what are the different methodology both direct, both field as well as uh, empirical formulas which are used for measuring the evapor evapotranspirations. Now, evaporation as we all know, it is the process in which liquid 
changes its phase to uh, to gaseous phase under the influence of temperature which is below the boiling point and basically there is a transfer of heat in this process so evaporation takes place from the land surface as we can see from this figure this is a uh, uh, through um, the open surfaces evaporation takes place uh, through sea lakes and also through the land surfaces where there, wherever there is soil moisture and the factors which affect the evaporation these all are basic, basic elementary physics we, you all know it still at the cost of repetition we, I am <coughs> iterating it again so it, um, this evaporation is affected by solar radiation. Higher the solar radiation, more will be the uh, your uh, evaporation. Then again, air temperature. If temperature air temperature is high, evaporation again will be very high. Vapor pressure. By vapor pressure, we deal. Uh, we talk. Uh, we uh, refer to the relative humidity. But this vapor pressure, the increase in vapor pressure will tend to decrease the evaporation of any place, a surface or land surface. Wind velocity, if wind velocity is high, the rate of evaporation will be even higher. Atmospheric pressure, if there is, the evaporation itself takes place because of pressure differential. If atmosphere, difference in atmospheric pressure between two uh, surfaces is high, then 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 you know the evaporation will be high then again the salinity of water this is also one of the factor if the water surface is uh, saline as in the case of oceans or the so uh, soils which are affected by salinity what happens is during in salinity the salt particles will be deposited on the spaces between the uh, interspaces between the soil particles as a result it will retard the rate of evaporation now how do we determine or determine the evaporation from a land surface or a lakes a water surface there is something called water budget budgeting method Especially this is adopted in case of a, in agriculture field, in case of a small lake or a small pond. Where the, the, this is given by this formula E is equal to I plus P minus uh, O, this formula. The essence of this formula is whatever which is coming and whatever which is going and whatever the losses are there. And we deduct all other losses, we can get the evaporation from that surface. Say here in this formula, uh, we can uh, explain it through this uh, chart. Uh, see, uh, this is a small uh, pond. If you have to study the water balance, there is there would be some inflow to the pond and there would be some outflow from the pond in case of there is heavy rain when the pond is filled up. The total evaporation will be the inflow plus the precipitation that is the total inflow total rainfall that is falling on the pond as well as the uh, the inflow which is coming from the its catchment area that is um, it is measured through stream uh, stream gauging it um, uh, evaporation will be that is uh, the inflow plus precipitation minus outflow that is the water which is going out from the pond minus the inflow to the ground water there would be some uh, portion of the water would be going infiltrated or through the deep percolation will be going into the soil surface that we have to deduct plus the change in storage so say see at one period of time the storage level was this much and at some other point of time the storage has the depth has decreased so this way we can find out the evaporation from a that, that uh, this is a basically basically inflow outflow losses equation through this and this is called the budgeting second is through the use of certain instruments in uh, during the march we have uh, went to one observatory where we have seen this type of system that is called uh, this is called a evaporometer and this particular one which is used for measuring the evaporation is us weather 
bureau class A pan evaporimeter and uh, the specialty of this evaporimeter is it's, it is made of 20 gauge uh, GI sheets and it is circular in diameter the uh, diameter of this pan is 120 centimeter and it has depth of 30 centimeter overall depth of 30 centimeter out of which 25 centimeter depth is always maintained with water and um, the provision is made it is um, uh, uh, so that it can stand above the ground surface at least 10 or 15 centimeter through a wooden platform so that there is a proper aeration of uh, proper aeration a field condition is provided and anything nearby any, uh, this uh, there is no vegetation and any crop which has a height more than one or two meter is avoided so it is made uh, clear, devoid of any vegetation nearby so the uh, water level every day is measured uh, for for finding the evaporation from this pan evaporimeter so if we measure the water level there is a uh, measuring gauge uh, which allows the measurement of the water level what how much depth of water is depleted over a period of time generally it is taken one day so in one day how much depth is depleted and that would be the evapo evaporation from that uh, of that particular area and this is um, related uh, equated with the evaporation from a sea, uh, ocean surface or a lake surface generally uh, evaporation from a small container of this size would be little more than the what is happening naturally in a lake or an ocean just because of the fact that it is in contact with uh, iron sheet with and heat will uh, affect the rate of evaporation there would be some uh, some correction has to be done and this correction factor which we call as US Bureau Pan Evaporation Factor is 0.7 so uh, you know, this whatever the evaporation that we get through this US pan evaporimeter class A, A evaporimeter it has to be divided by uh, it has to be uh, uh, factored in by a uh, quantity 0 0.7 so then we will get the actual evaporation so whatever the lake evaporation divided by the pan evaporation then we will get the actual evaporation now there is one more term evapotranspiration as the name suggests it's a combination of two words evaporation plus transpiration and this happens in uh, uh, vegetative condition evaporation as we know is uh, uh, occurs in moist surfaces it also uh, which also include land water plant and other surfaces Transpiration happens through, it's a process of respiration of plant. Through respiration, it will release some uh, moisture water to the atmosphere. And this process is called transpiration. And this water is, is, is released through stomata opening. Uh, we can have an analogy with our um, human, human as well, like we perspire in a, uh, in a uh, hot, humid uh, day through some glands. So, same way there is an opening for stomatal opening in plants which uh, which allows uh, this water moisture to be passed to the atmosphere and this is called your transpiration. And this both evaporation as well as transpiration is in response to the climatic demand. There is one more term which is very important as far as agriculture is concerned that is consumptive use. You might be knowing consumptive use is the combined effect of evapotranspiration plus some small fraction of water is required for the metabolic activity of the plant. In the case like for photosynthesis for support and anchoring of the plant for food synthesis they require some water and for the uh, we call it the makeup for the metabolic or the growth of or it's for its own need and this is called the combined effect of evapotranspiration and this water a fraction of evapotranspiration which is required generally it is less than one percent of the total evapotranspiration 
this is we call it as consumptive use so consume evapotranspiration plus the water required small fraction although required for the metabolic activity of the plant which is your consumptive use so this consumptive use is evaporation plus transpiration plus water required for metabolic process generally since uh, it is very less we consider uh, evapotranspiration and consumptive use as uh, s1 as same because its consumptive use is much 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 lower than evaporation or evap combined effect of evaporation and transpiration coming to uh, factors affecting uh, evapotranspiration there are uh, they, uh, they can be uh, broadly classified as crop factor then plant factor soil factor and management factor in crop factor includes it includes the crop cover the plant height or its canopy or even the root density if you have a good crop cover then the surface area which is measured through leaf area index would be high and through this higher leaf area index more uh, stomatal opening would be there more transpiration will be there so your effect of your transpiration will be more from place where the plant uh, plant height is very good the place where crop cover is more and second uh, under crop factor is the root density if there is more dense root then what will uh, it will do it will support the plant the plant growth would be more vigorous there would be more canopy there would be good uh, vegetative growth and from vegetative growth there would be good higher evapotranspiration second is the weather factor weather factor which affects evapotranspirations are the one which affects evaporation too like uh, the solar radiation higher the solar radiation more will be the evapotranspiration wind speed higher wind speed necessitates higher evapotranspiration we call it et in a more uh, easy way uh, temperature if there is higher temperature the evaporation again would be more uh, vapor uh, relative humidity if re relative uh, but relative humidity if relative humidity is more then the evaporation or evapotranspiration would be less because it is inversely proportional third is your soil factor soil factor includes the soil moisture if the soil moisture of a particular place under where vegetation is taking place is good then it will provide better uptake of nutrients as well as water as a result there would be good crop growth and as we know from good crop growth we can have can have higher uh, et then again uh, soil factor uh, there would be uh, factors like presence of impermeable layer if the soil depth is not adequate if impermeable layer is exposed in such scenario the evapotranspiration from such surfaces would be less then coming to the management factors this management factors include mulching uh, shading if uh, from a mulch surface if soil surface if the surface is covered with uh, synthetic or uh, organic mulch so in from such places uh, through uh, the main crop the evapotranspiration will be high but from the surrounding its canopy area surrounding areas the evaporation would be less since mulch will arrest the soil moisture to be from going up then shading if there is more shading then uh, temperature will be less even the solar radiation at that place will be less as a result the evapotranspiration from shaded place would be less root weeding the third management factor is weeding from the weeded surface from weeders if there is a proper weeding uh, if weeds is a hindrance for plant development if uh, weeding is done properly in the crop area crop would be uh, well uh, well established and from a well established crop there would be more evapotranspiration some study has suggested that the rate of uptake of water in a plant is range from around uh, uh, around 15 to uh, 
1.8 mm per a centimeter per hour inside in, in, the, in the plant surface and also the rate of transpiration evapotranspiration is higher during the days uh, around around 90 to 95 percent of ET or evapotranspiration take place during the daytime so in this weather factor even the day length day length is very important because evapotranspiration takes place maximum during the uh, sun, uh, sunlight hour and daytime. A, around 80 to 90 percent of ET is take, uh, would take place in the daytime. Night time there is no much evapotranspiration taking place. Also there are some factors like nutrients and fertilizer and uh, irrigation that come under management factor. If you uh, uh, soil is properly fertilized, if you irrigate properly then from such surfaces the ET would be higher compared to the places where these management practices are not adopted. Now coming to determination of ET, evapotranspiration, there are two methods. One is direct method and second is indirect method. Direct method involves isolation of a portion of crop where the crop is grown. We isolate it hydrologically for determining the ET measurements. And for in, in indirect method, the, it is calculated from crop and climate data and also through some mathematical modeling, through some simulation or from theoretical formulas, which we will be discussing. This course, uh, evapotranspiration, let me tell you, is uh, very important. Uh, evapotranspiration, determination of evapotranspiration is very important because it deals with the uh, how irrigation. If you have to design irrigation for a particular place, we have a course for irrigation engineering so that this evapotranspiration forms the core of irrigation engineering. You cannot design, you cannot determine the water requirement unless you have an idea about evapotranspiration. And this, uh, the, all the methods I am not going in depth because I know that you have, you have got notes uh, about ir irrigation in the, uh, irrigation engineering dealing with this evaporation, evapotranspiration. If you go through it thoroughly, uh, then you, uh, your um, design of irrigation, sprinkler irrigation would be, you will have a mastery over, over it. So because water requirement, water demand is totally dependent on evapotranspiration. This evapotranspiration is one of the major factors for deciding the uh, amount of quantity, of quantity of irrigation that has to be applied and the quantum of irrigation that has to be applied. This irrigation evapor measurement of evapotranspiration, I will give you as an assignment. You can you can submit it within a week to me. And uh, uh, we are talking about this measurement of ET direct method. There is one field uh, measurement of ET. Uh, in you know, field measurement, what we do is we isolate that place from where we have to determine the evapotranspiration. There we find the uh, take the water balance approach. See, this is your uh, crop surface, the place where you, we have isolated. This ET or the uh, 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 change in ET is uh, measured by knowing the soil moisture at the time under consideration. Say we have soil moisture at a particular time and uh, we have measured the soil moisture either through gravimetric method or through any other method at one point of time and again we will measure the soil moisture at some uh, few days later. This is SM1 and SM2 and uh, this, uh, this uh, difference in soil moisture of two periods plus the irrigation that you have applied. What we are doing, we are finding out the evapotranspiration uh, for a particular period and plus the effective rainfall. What is effective rainfall? The rainfall uh, which infiltrates into the soil in case of irrigation engineering for hydrology it is different. It may have a different notation but here it means the infiltrated soil from the excess, uh, from the rainfall is your effective rainfall. So this uh, evapotranspiration of a, at a particular time is change in moisture level at uh, two different periods plus the irrigation, plus the effective rainfall or the infiltration, plus the upward draft of groundwater through capillary movement or 
otherwise uh, which contributes there uh, to your evapotranspiration minus the deep percolation so when there is uh, uh, there would be uh, if there is infiltration there would also be deep percolation that factor has to be uh, sub subtracted from this formula and minus the surface runoff so through this equation we can find this is the uh, field method of finding the evapotranspiration another field measurement of evapotranspiration you uh, include the use of lysimeters so lysimeters are very popular very known uh, instruments for actual measurement or simulating the evapotranspiration of a field uh, in some field experimental method there are two uh, method uh, uh, used in lysimeter one is the vein two types of uh, lysimeter one is vein type and second one is non vein type the picture that you saw, see in this figure is of non vein type lysimeters uh, here uh, what happens is uh, you uh, select a particular place where you have to find the evapotranspiration of a particular place isolate it hydrologically and all things all the inputs provided here is is managed it's not natural artificially there would be uh, three uh, cylindrical or rectangular boxes the first one is for the me measurement of evaporation it has sides covered as well as the bottom covered and here up to certain level we fill with bare soil dry soil and water is filled up to saturation in this first container second container which is used to find the evaporation as well as deep percolation here we have the side covered top and bottoms are open so that it necessitates deep percolation so there would be evaporation from this side and from the bottom side there would be deep percolation same soil and water is uh, filled till saturation to a certain level and third a container again has got side is chopped and bottom and from up it is open for evaporation as well as transpiration in the third one we we you know we plant crops this is more a uh, field uh, simulation so he, uh, comparing these three uh, three lysimeters from first one you have to you can find the evaporation from second one evaporation plus deep percolation third one evapotranspiration evaporation transpiration and deep percolation to find how much is the et first we find the evaporation by observing the change in depth of moisture from the first one and the second uh, here over a period of time because it is filled with water and soil so if uh, whatever the depth comes it is uh, observed and second one where because he in the first case there would not be any deep percolation whatever soil water lost moisture lost is through evaporation and in the second one uh, water is lost through evaporation as well as deep percolation so deep uh, deep percolation would be b th that is the level here in the second uh, column minus the uh, water level uh, that we have determined from the first one that would be your deep percolation we can find out and to find out the evapotranspiration we again we measure the change in water level in this third container which has got a plant as well so um, so deep percolation and evaporation as well as transpiration is taking place so this uh, water level we observe it this can be uh, found out by the water level at c minus the water level here in the second one that is v minus a so this way we can find out uh, practically or in the field through field measurement and lysimeters are very popular and very uh, widely used for determining the evapotranspiration from a naturally simulated condition this is the field trial where the lysimeters is installed here you see the cylindrical blocks 
here this is open lysimeter this is the closed one this is open from uh, uh, top and as well as bottom this is closed lysimeter that, that is the bottom is closed and here here we have uh, grown the crop as well so uh, the water level each day is observed from all this uh, and compared and finally we can find out the uh, evapotranspiration through this lysimeter. This is an example of non-weighing type because we are measuring only the depth. There are certain kind of lysimeter um, attached to this, uh, this uh, box is a load cell where we can weigh the total uh, mass, total weight of the entire system, the water soil and wherever there is plant it can be weighed on a daily basis and this load cell uh, helps in getting the readings so if there is any change in um, et it will be reflected by the weight which is uh, uh, the load cell is the, the reading will be digital reading will be provided as each day how much weight is reduced earlier case we see the change in depth here in this weighing type we see the change in weight through uh, one arrangement where the entire unit is attached to a load cell where it gives the weight change in weight each day now there are certain indirect method for et determination this indirect method is based on uh, many uh, climatic parameters some are temperature based some are radiation based, some are evaporation based and some are based on a combination of one or two environmental factors. Based upon this, we have throat weight Blaney cradle this is based on temperature. We have Christensen pan and pan evaporation based on evaporation and Jensen Hazley based on radiation and the method which is you which uses combination of all these uh, climatic factor is one pen uh, penman montiet and fao 56 penman montiet which is also called modified penman montiet and this this is modified penman montiet is most commonly used and most popular and what you have to do is this will help in this hydrology course as well as irrigation you uh, st study you have got the notes of I think you have got the notes of this so uh, at least uh, go through this uh, thought with Blaney at least three or four penman and FAO 56 and I am giving this as an assignment you can uh, submit it within a week in assignment copy uh, there are certain terminologies which is very essential for determining the water requirements. This uh, terminology for an irrigation engineer, for an irrigation planner should be in uh, there in one's tongue tip. These are potential evapotranspiration. I am not going to elaborate on it because this is something which you have to know, you have to study, you have to learn. Potential evapotranspiration. Second is actual evapotranspiration these all are very simple there is minute difference you go through it and it should be very much uh, handy with you whenever you have to we have to solve anything related to irrigation or sprinklers or drip irrigation third is the reference crop evapotranspiration that we call it eto second is evapotranspiration of specific crop that is etc Third is adjusted evapotranspiration of specific crop that is ETC adjusted and one thing very important that is crop coefficient KC value. These are, these are certain terms um, you, have, you have to be very acquainted with and this on this note I am going to end my session today's session and uh, what I want is whatever uh, this irrigation this evapotranspiration is common to both uh, for it is one of the hydrological com component and also a very important factor for deciding the irrigation or, or uh, scheduling the irrigation or determining the water requirement of any crop that's all from my side I hope you will uh, uh, you were able to understand whatever was told to you and as an assignment you do the indirect method of determin determination of evapotranspiration that is uh, only three or four important one which I have told you especially the FAO 56 Spenman Montiet 
throat wave and blending clinton method so that's all from my side thank you very much